My name is Martha Robson Negri, and I was born December 23rd, 1929. It would take forever for me to mention the fond memories of my parents. My father said that I was the cause of the 1929 depression. My mom was the best cook in the whole world. She could take a bunch of nothing, especially like during the depression when money was tight. And I never remember ever having a bad meal. The fun we had when the family was all together. My brothers were a bunch of comedians. My dad could fix anything. I remember him leaving the house at 4.30 in the morning and not getting home till after seven o'clock at night. But when my father came home, we all sat down at the table with him and ate supper with him, no matter what time it was when he got home. My mom was quite ill. She had a, a very bad heart. But she always told me, don't you worry, nothing's going to happen to me till I know all my kids are grown and happy. And she kept her word. His name was James Vincent Negri, and we met when the Negri family moved two doors down from me when Jim and I were 15. We did not like each other at all. His sister was five years younger than us. I adopted his sister as my little sister. He would say to Betty, go across the street and get me cigarettes and stuff. And I would say to him, don't you tell her what to do. We just like clashed. I had to go to the drugstore, and when I came out, it was raining. And as I'm walking home, his car pulls up, and it's Jim. And he goes, hey, stupid, you want to ride? And I said, I'd rather drown. But then the rain really started to come down, and he goes, get in the car. I got in the car, and as I'm sitting there, I'm looking at him, and I'm going, you know, he really isn't that bad. <laughs> looking like, you know? And I started paying a little bit, of, not knowing he was doing the same thing, paying a little bit different attention. Always clowning around and teasing me. Hey, shorty, like, you know, patting me on the head and everything. It was after the movie. It was a beautiful night. So we walked. And, and all the way home, all we did was talk and laugh. 
and we were saying good night and talking and he goes now when we get married and I looked I said oh we're going to get married are we and he goes yeah we're getting married I I told her on a Saturday that Jim and I were going to get engaged for my birthday she was all happy and excited and Monday, that night she passed. But she always said nothing was going to happen to her. And I don't care what the doctors say. Nothing's going to happen to me till I know all my kids are happy. I was the last one. I was, and uh, she was happy. I remember the date he left for boot camp was February 2nd, 1951. I wrote him every single day. I wrote to him. And uh, he wrote when he could, of course. So when Jim left, I mean, it was hard, but what kept me going was my mother-in-law. We were great, great, great good friends. She taught me to make the sausage and the meatballs and everything. So I, I was busy, but I, I, I kept busy. About a month or so before he came home, I had to have an operation on my back. My sister came to the hospital to see me, and she's waving a, waving this letter. And it was the notice from the, the uh, commandant of the Marine Corps warning all the women to get off the street because the guys are coming home. It was about 7 o'clock in the morning, and all of a sudden, I hear the man across the street, Hey, Jim, welcome home. And I looked out the window just in time to see Jim come turning in the front gate. I just ran down the stairs, curlers and all. And when I got to the bottom of the steps, he picked me up and he was swirling. And my father and sister going, Jim, Jim, put her down, put her down, her back. Her. And I was saying, no, don't put me down, don't put me down. We always said we were going to have four kids. Jim was the comedian. Like, you know, you never knew what he was going to come up with. Beth was the instigator. Michael would be the one sitting there thinking, what can I get into next? To Tommy's credit, he was the more quiet one most of the time. Sitting around the table, anything could happen. Before you know it, an elbow would come out. Sometimes, like, the tempers would fly and they would get into little difficulties and stuff, but they all got along great. Three boys slept in one room. She used to sneak into the, you know, too quiet in my room. And before you know it, I'd hear a whole bunch of laughing.
We had 13 years. The last three were, weren't good because that's when he was sick, but we could never let him know how sick he was. The doctors told us not to tell him because he would have gone crazy worrying about the kids and me. It, it was hard, you know, looking at him and um, hardly ever missed a day of work. Sometimes I didn't know how he got up out of bed. That, that was a very hard time, very hard time trying to keep him from knowing. When I had my children, I thought, it can't get any better than this. This is as good as it can possibly get. And then comes the grandchildren, right on down, all 11 of you. Now they're giving me great-grandchildren. And I don't know where to go from here. It's wonderful the way my grandchildren are. We have a wonderful time when we all get together. I, I mean, how much of a bubble can you be on? <laughs> <laughs> Not only the love I give, but the love that they give back. How is it a wonder that I'm not exploding? The years that have gone by, they've been, I, I will admit, I miss him. And I wish he was, but still, I know he's, he's seeing everything. Starting out from not standing each other, you know, of crossing the street rather than pass each other on the thing. And now look what we, look, look what we did. 